Uh, let's see. We've got Joel in New Jersey. Thanks for waiting. Hello. Hi. Hey, Joel. Hey, how you guys doing? Pretty good. How are you? Um, good, good. Hey, uh, appreciate all you guys. All you guys do good stuff. Um, I just wanted to ask you something. Do you guys think that atheism alone is like is good enough to be a good like to be to have a moral foundation? You know, don't you think religion is important to be uh, to have that to, to have that structure? So you've, st you've started off with a false dichotomy. Atheism isn't enough for a moral foundation because atheism is just, I don't believe there's a God. But it's yeah. atheism versus religion is not a proper dichotomy. Um, and, and it doesn't even address the moral issue. All you need for a moral foundation, uh, secular humanism is, a, an, is consistent with atheism and serves, at least in part, for a foundation. But all you really need is a philosophical understanding um, Sam Harris has talked about it. I've talked about it about, uh, for example, well-being. That's the one that we would advocate for. Uh, but you don't need anything at all like religion to reach moral conclusions or have a moral foundation. As a matter of fact, don't you think what religions tend to do is poison the thoughts about religion by using, you know, authority figures and dogma uh, to advocate for specific doctrines rather than setting up the tools one would need to evaluate whether or not our our moral conclusions are actually in our best interest. Well, I, I think it's the other way. I think it's people who poison the religions and try to take advantage of some of the. What's the Bible? What does the Bible say, for example, about homosexuality? Well, it says different things. It contradicts itself. It says, no. you know, we're all created equal, and then it that's also that's says, you know, saying yeah. we're all created equal has nothing to do with homosexuality. What does it say about homosexuality with regard to morality? Well, it says you shouldn't lie with another man. And it says you should, you know, stone them, all that stuff. Yeah, so basically the Bible's position on homosexuality is that it is immoral. Is that people poisoning well, religion, or is that what the book that is the foundation of the religion actually says? I, I think it was the way people were trying to understand and, and get, you know, get some, under, uh, some, some structure, some rules Okay. On how behavior should be, you know, treated back then. You know, it, uh, you know, if everything was allowed, anything happened, you know, we wouldn't have any structure. Well, first so of all, were... first of all, that's that's also fallacious because first, I'm not suggesting anything should be allowed. I'm talking about one particular issue that you're that the the Bible got wrong. Yeah, but what if you said, what if in the Bible it said, you know, having sex, you know. Um, in a certain position, is uh, you should stone them for that, you know? Yeah, uh, I, I would think that would say, be ridiculous and wrong too. Yeah, but I'm saying, it, what, what if, if it didn't, if anything you put in the Bible, anything that the people were trying to establish as an order or a way to live, it would be considered wrong for some people and, well, and right for some others. So you had to start somewhere. No, so, okay, yes, you have to start somewhere. Is the Bible just a book written by people with their best guesses on how to do things? I don't think it's their best guess. I think it's just a common understanding of, of okay. life and, and it, what they're experiencing. Okay, so there's nothing about the Bible that we should actually care about, right, with regard to morality. We should be able to throw the Bible out. No, no, well, no. Well, well, wait, well, how, can, how can it be very important if it's just people's best understanding or common knowledge at the time? Was. Well, it's the history of our morality. It's the history of how we began. We don't need a history of morality. We need morality. Well, it, yeah, well, it if if your history of morality is that you keep getting it wrong, what does that tell you about your current morality? What, I don't know what you mean by getting it wrong. I mean, a lot of people who call themselves Christians are really good people. Uh, okay, you know, so what? Some of the things, aren't, aren't a lot of people who call themselves atheists good people? Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. so now, that, now we've pointed out that the religion is irrelevant to whether or not somebody can be a good person, no, right? No. It's not irrelevant because... It, it, it is irrelevant. You just, it, Joel, if a bunch of Christians can be good people and a bunch of atheists can be good people, then clearly the religion is not a relevant component into whether or not one can be good. The people who, um, the atheists, 
right? They grew up in the, in the no, that's horseshit. Community. That that is a that is a lie. I there mean, are atheists who. It's a lie. Yes, it's a lie. There are atheists who grew up in Christian communities. There are atheists who grew up in Hindu communities. There are atheists who grew up in atheist communities, including fourth and fifth generations atheists. One of them just raised his hand on the other side of the damn glass in here. You don't get to cherry pick and say, oh, the only reason that atheists can be good is because they grew up in a Christian society, when I'm telling you the reason that atheists can be good is by exercising reason to understand morality, and there's nothing in the Bible that is moral because it's in the Bible. I can throw it all out. The reason to not kill people has nothing to do with whether or not a god supposedly told ancient people don't kill people. That's not why it's good or bad. No, I, no, I didn't say atheists can't be good without, uh, you know, uh, religion. You were saying it's the religion. reason you were saying the reason that atheists are good is because they grew up in Christian cultures, and that's horseshit. Yeah, that's, but that's because that is horseshit. I am a better person now that I have abandoned the dogma of Christianity than I was when I was a Christian. That's fine, but you're all you all you what you base as goodness is. It's from your upbringing. Through no, culture, it's not. Through no, it's not. That's what I'm trying to tell you, Joel. What I base as goodness is not in any way tied to my upbringing. What I base as right, goodness, me, what I base as goodness, is a foundation of well-being about discovering what actually benefits us and society and what detracts from us and society. It has nothing to do with my Christian upbringing. My Christian upbringing is morally bankrupt. I didn't okay. have I didn't well, have a Christian upbringing at all, and I think I'm a good person. That's, you might disagree, but I, uh, no, no. I, hey, I'm not saying you can't be good people. I'm just hey, saying, should, should we kill yeah. Should we kill homosexuals? No. Okay, so you and I agree on something about morality, and you know what what we have in common? We both disagree with the Bible. So, what standard do you use when you go through and cherry pick the Bible to figure out which parts you should listen to and which parts you shouldn't? How do you figure out? Which parts of the Bible are good and correct, and which parts are wrong? The, the whole you got you got to take it in context. That's all. No, 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 no. That's not remotely what I asked, and that's not even an answer to anything. You got to take it in context. If the Bible says that something is moral or immoral, what standard do you use to figure out whether or not the Bible is correct? Because we're in agreement that the Bible is right on some things and wrong on some things. So I'm asking you, what standard do you use to figure out when the Bible is correct and when it's wrong? The standard is you, you take it as a story. When you read it, when it says, kill this homosexual, you have to read, don't just, you have to read past that verse and before it. And what the time was that they were writing this stuff. What difference does the time? What difference does the time make when they were writing it? Exodus twenty-one gives all the instructions with regard to owning slaves. Is it morally permissible to own people as property? Back, it, back then it was, but the Bible. So whoa, 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 whoa. Joel, Joel, it. Joel, you're saying it used to be morally correct to own people as property? That's that's what they thought. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm not asking what they thought. I'm asking if they were correct. Were they correct when they thought it was morally okay to own people? If they, if they were correct, I, I don't know. You got to ask them. I'm not. I wasn't no, I can, is it morally correct to own people? No, no. Okay, it's, it's not. Was it morally? Was no. it more not? What do you mean to you? Do you think that you you get to make up your own morality? That there's no moral truth to be discovered? Because if so, we can end this call right now. Because I don't give a rat's ass what any individual's opinion is. Is it immoral to own people? Just as a fact. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay. Immoral, was it immoral? Yeah. Was it immoral last week? Yeah. Was it immoral yeah. a thousand years ago? A thousand? Uh, no, no. It wasn't immoral a thousand years. It ago. wasn't. It was. So your your morality just changes with time? No, not my morality. People who had slaves were. There were people who owned slaves, and, and they, they were people. immoral, right? No, there He's, weren't any more people. They were just okay. wrong, and the, they, didn't, they weren't thinking I'm right. I'm sorry, but you are hopelessly confused on the issue of morality if you can say that slavery is immoral, but it was okay back yeah, then. Slavery. He's not asking you if, you if they thought it was okay back then. He's asking you if you think it was okay yeah, back I then. Yeah, I told him a few, I already told him a few times, I already I think it's bad. So those they people were it. wrong, right? Yes, they were wrong. Yes. Okay, my, so the Bible is yeah, wrong I mean, about slavery, right? 
Yeah, the Bible, yes. Okay. <laughs> I would never go to the Bible for slavery. I would okay. Say, so, the Joel. Says it's okay, so. Joel, how did you determine that the Bible is wrong about slavery? Well, through our culture, through my upbringing, through my parents, through yeah. my religion. No, 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 no. Yes. No, 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 no. There's nothing yes. in your there's nothing in your religion, assuming you're a Christian, appealing to the Bible, that says that slavery is immoral. It says the opposite. But you've determined on your own that the Bible is wrong about slavery, that it's wrong about stoning homosexuals. What method did you use to determine that the Bible is wrong? That your understanding of reality is superior to the Bible? It it, it, it says in the Bible that people you gotta treat people like, you know. Like like yourself, you know, you got to be, you you know, treat them like you want to treat others. You know, you, everybody's you, treated equal. Aren't, aren't, that, you, aren't you, you cherry picking? That context. No, no, I'm put, trying to say you got to take the context of that. What that Bible says. If the Bible's wrong hard. about if the Bible's wrong about slavery and stoning homosexuals, what makes you think that other verse is right? Yeah, is any part of the Bible absolute, or is it all? Uh, does it all it's have not, to be taken in context? That, is there anything that's absolutely? Sorry. You you have to take into context when you read each story. Each I don't think you I don't that. think you remotely know the context, but the context is irrelevant. In one verse, it says that you can own people as property, and then you're going to use another verse that says you need to treat people the way you want to be treated, and you're going to say that that second verse is right and the first one is wrong. How did you not? Why yeah. did you not? Why did you not reach the conclusion that the first verse is right and the second, and the second verse is wrong? It's not that it's right or wrong. It's that it's it is that it's story. right or wrong. How the hell can we have a conversation about morality if you're going to say it's not about whether it's right or wrong? And you've already acknowledged no, that it's wrong. I'm telling you that it's, it's a story that explains what was going on then. No, it's right? not a story. story. It's not a story. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. Have you read Exodus 21? It's not a story. It is instructions from God about how to treat your slaves. That's not a story. What? Yeah, of course, this is st that, that, the, the whole thing is a story. It's not like... Okay, then why should we pay any attention to the story? I'll go with you. It's, Let's it's say it's history. all a That's story, how... and this part of the story says that it's okay to own people, and this part of the story uh -huh. doesn't actually contradict it, but you want to read it in a way that you think contradicts it. How do you know you can get that backwards? How do you figure out that God is the good one and Satan is the evil one? Why not the other way around? Well, that I mean, that's easy. You you look. You got to read it in context. When the with the story, what is Holy trying to shit. tell you? I'm, dude, I'm trying. All right. Like, if you're, I atheist, asked a question. Atheist. How do you how did you determine that God is the good one and Satan is the evil one? Mm-hmm. How? <laughs> well, I mean, it's in the Bible. It says God is good and, and the devil is the deceiver. Okay, you know? and it also says that you can own people as slaves. So. It, we, how do we determine which of those verses you, you're going to think is correct and it which one of the verses you're not going to think? You can own them as slaves. It, it, tells it absolutely you does. Did. It tells you to buy your slaves it's from the heathen around you and that you, they are your property, yeah. which you can pass on to your children. Don't talk to me about the Bible when you don't know what the hell you're talking about. I'm asking, no. there are parts of the Bible that you think are true and parts of the Bible that you think are not true. How do you no, tell I, the difference? Okay, there are parts of the there are statements in the Bible that you think are morally correct, and statements in the Bible that you think are morally incorrect. How do you tell which one's which? If you say context one more time, I'm hanging up. <laughs> well, if, if you well, how do you tell which is which? Is you have to look at the story, right? Read it, and what it was it trying to tell you? What is it trying to tell? What is it? What is the Bible trying to tell you in Exodus 21? Yeah. What is the Bible trying to tell you in Exodus 21? Well, it's about, you know, letting his people go and... and no, it's not David. about letting his people go. That's prior to that. That's when, they, that's when the Jews were enslaved by the Israelites. That was let my people go. Exodus 21 is instructions for the, for the Israelites on how they should treat their slaves, allowing them to beat them as long as they don't die within a couple days. So what is Exodus okay, 21 so trying to tell that's us? For, that's great. If... if if they didn't have that, let's say they didn't have nothing, they, they had slaves and, and they, they beat them until they died and there was no punishment. You know, that, that, the Bible is telling them if you kill one of your slaves, if you beat them and they die, then you're going to die. It says it in there. If you, if you beat, if you so, punch so them, you're okay with, so you're okay, out, you're okay with having slaves as long as you don't kill them, right? No, no, no. So you, I didn't say that. I didn't say I'm okay with having, I'm telling that this stuff. But the Bible says. But the Bible's okay with it. 
The Bible is just telling you a story of what happened back then. What good is it? To, what good is a story if it tells you that something? Shut up for a second. What good is it to tell someone a story and tell them that this is good and moral if, in fact, it's not moral? But what does it say? It's good and moral to to be a, to have a slave. I don't. I don't think it's ever said that it's good and moral to have a slave. Goodbye. There's no. You don't have any understanding about morality or the book that you're talking about. If it gives instructions and it tells you don't eat shellfish, homosexuals have committed an abomination, they deserve to be stoned, don't wear fabrics of missed stuff, but you can in fact have slaves and here's where you should buy them and here's what you should do about it, that is an implicit moral uh, uh, approval to own slaves. And here's why, because if you or I were God, Joel, and we knew that it was wrong to own people's property, commandment number one would not be, I am the Lord thy God. It would be, thou shalt not own another human being as property, period. If your God is so weak that he has to soften slavery, well, I'll let him keep slaves, just don't, you know, kill them. Uh, but he can tell you not to eat shellfish. You've got a dumbass, useless God. <laughs> and, I think what Joel was skirting around, though, is is that he looks at the Bible and he uses his own moral judgment as to what is yep. okay and what isn't. And if that's the case, then why do you need the Bible at all? Exactly. And that's the point that I was trying to get to. But every time I asked him how you tell the difference, well, it's a story and it's context. The truth is, everybody pretty much comes about the morality the same way. They are trained from children by whatever their parents accepted. And then after that, they start to work it out themselves based on reason and evidence. The exceptions are religion. And when people get so entrenched in religion that they are willing to make excuses for slavery, they are willing to say that once upon a time it was okay to stone homosexuals, but now it's not. You are putting yourself in a position where you are in constant contradiction, where you're saying, yes, this verse got it wrong, but that's okay because that was people's best guess, uh, or that was their common understanding. But this verse over here definitely got it right, and so this is the one that's from God. You yeah. can't do that. You have no, you are using your own brain which is great, I just wish you'd acknowledge it, because the second you do, you get to get to the point where the rest of us are, which is that book is irrelevant, because slavery is either moral or not, independent of what any book, holy or otherwise, has to say about it. Homosexuality is either immoral or not, independent of what anybody's opinion is or what somebody wrote in a book. So if your argument, as it was for Joel, was that religion is necessary for morality, no, it's not. Nothing even approaching religion is necessary for morality. And a matter of fact, most of the definitions that we would use for religion are the antithesis of the sort of thing that would lead to a proper moral system because they include dogma, because they include because I said so sorts of authority, moral command theory, divine command theory, things like that. If you want to actually have a better understanding about morality, sit down, throw out all the religion, throw out all the religious books, and ask yourself, Make a list of the things that you think are right and the things that you think are wrong with respect to morality. And then draw a line down the paper. And on the right-hand side, write why. Oh, I think it's wrong to kill people. Why? Wow. Um, gee, I've never actually thought about that. I just always went with the, what, the, what the book says or what I was taught as a kid. Why would it be wrong to kill people? And maybe you can get to the realization that we have to share space on this planet. And so... I'd rather not be killed, and you'd rather not be killed, so it's in our best interest to encourage a mindset that is in opposition to us just running around killing people or not having consequences for that. That it's in our best interest as individuals and as a society to continue to encourage the sort of society where murdering people is discouraged. You can go down the list and you can make all those. When you get to one where you say, ah, because the Bible says so, you failed. Put a big F on the paper, you're done. Because the Quran says so, fail. Because these arguments from authority do not get you to any actual understanding about morality. They are showstoppers. They are for the lazy thinkers. And there's lots of lazy thinkers. And all of us are lazy on occasion. I was lazy for many, many, many years and didn't want to think about these. Didn't want, you know, why, why should I bother thinking about this? This philosophy stuff, it's all, God, sitting around, you know, you've got, we're going to talk about whether or not reality is real and blah, blah, blah. This stuff matters. But at a minimum, if your view is that you can go through the holy book that serves as the foundation for your religion and on your own pick out the things that you think are right and pick out the things that you think are wrong, 
you are your own God, you are your own religion, and that book is irrelevant, you could have just as easily made that list and said, because I think so, on the right-hand side for every single one of them.